Hey, how are you? I'm John. Thanks for joining me for this video. Sometimes when you're building a model, you'll put together a couple of uh, parts, and while the fit may be okay, uh, like along in here, and you want to leave it as a panel line, even when glued up, there might be just the slightest hairline crack, which you don't want to leave that there, really, because when you try to put washes in it or do other weathering, it'll just run right through it. Um, and ultimately, at the end, it'll still just look like a crack in the plastic. But there is a great way to avoid that. When I'm faced with something like that, I grab out my Mr. Surfacer 500. Now, this is, it's not dissolved putty. It's, um, <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure what it's made of, but I've used it for years and the stuff works. It's thinned with uh, Mr. Color Thinner and Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. You can thin it with um, automotive lacquers, the really strong stuff. I've done that, although it's a little hot to use on plastic. Um, you can even thin it with alcohol. It will work with alcohol. And we'll take advantage of that later on in this video. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it comes in several grades. Uh, there's Mr. Surfacer 500, 1000, 1200, and I think there may even be a 1500. And what it is, is just a very thick gray goop in there. And the lower the number, the thicker the goo. This is, this is, you can see how slow it crawls there. It's some very thick stuff, but you can take advantage of that. Now it has a lot of uses. It can be used as a primer. Um, the Mr. Surfacer 1200, you can thin that with some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and airbrush that onto your model. It works really well. Um, you can thin even the Mr. Surfacer 500, but you have to use just a little bit of the Mr. Surfacer to the thinner. So. Um, until you've gotten used to using it, I would recommend going for the Mr. Surfacer 1200 if you want to use it as a primer. It can be used as a proper gap filler where you want the gap to be completely gone. Um, it does shrink, so if you're going to use it that way, I recommend that you apply it to the gap or the crack that you're going to uh, be working on. Make sure that it goes outside of the gap, that it's, that it's a little bit of a they got a little bit of bead along the gap and then give it three or four days to dry. Uh, sand it away. Uh, wet sanding works best. You should be good to go, but um, do be aware that it, it does shrink. In this video, I want to talk about sealing off those cracks that I mentioned earlier that can happen where you have panel lines that don't fully, or, or seams that don't fully meet and where there's a little bit of a gap like you see here or along here on the bottom. Now, I do want these to remain panel lines, so I don't want to fill them in completely, but I want to get them filled in enough so that they look like the other panel lines on the model. I don't want them to be as deep. I don't want washes to run through them. Um, I don't want uh, anything uh, to, to make it look obviously like where two parts were joined together. I want it, when it's painted and weathered, I want it to look like a panel line. Application of the product couldn't be any easier. First, when you open it up, you want to give it a good stir with an electric stir tool if you have one. Um, you can use just a, a cocktail stick or the end of an old paintbrush or something like that, but you'll be stirring on this stuff a long time. If you don't have one of these electric stir tools, I highly recommend getting one because it comes in handy in a lot of different areas. So I had already given this a really good stir with the stir tool. Once it's fully stirred, I get an old brush. This is a synthetic cheap brush from the, from the craft store that's seen better days. But with something like this, you don't need a really good brush. Don't, don't use your Winsor & Newton Series 7 or your Raphael or anything like that. And all I'm going to do is dip in there, get a good amount of it on the brush, and I'm just going to apply it here to this panel line. Now, some of it is closed up, and some of it left a fairly big crack. So, I want to apply it evenly across all of it, because I want to try and get it to the point that it's all the same depth. 
and you just keep dabbing it on until you get it fully sealed in. You'll see, like right there, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but you'll see in some places where it kind of runs into a crack and it may leave a bit of a crack in one area. Just keep applying. This stuff on a per use basis is relatively cheap. The single bottle might be kind of expensive, but a single bottle will last a long time. But I just go back along and keep applying it. Keep working it in until I get a good seal all the way around where that gap is. Now one thing to note, when you've applied this and it starts drying, you may see a bubble form here and there. See that bubble right there? If you catch it before it's dried, all I do is just pop the bubble and add a little more in. Now, if you don't catch it, oh, there's another one down there just forming. If you don't catch it before it dries, that's okay. If it leaves a crack, you can go back in, apply some more Mr. Surfacer, and then clean it up like I want to show you that you do for the rest of it. But keep your eye on those little bubbles because they do appear from time to time. Okay, I've given this about 15-20 minutes to dry. Um, you'll see those bubbles are still popping up. I'll talk about how to deal with that. But right now what I want to do is I want to clean off the excess Mr. Surfacer. To do that, I use some cotton buds and some simple rubbing alcohol. Now I've put this in this handy dandy squirt bottle here to make it easier to, to get to, but trust me, it's rubbing alcohol. Okay, first you address the model. Hello, model. <laughs> Sorry, that was pretty dumb. Um, I take one end of a cotton bud and I just dip it in there. I don't dab it off. I don't do anything with it. I just let it soak up some alcohol. And then I start rubbing right along that area that I just applied the Mr. Surfacer to. Now you'll have to rub for just a little bit to get it reactivated. But it'll start pulling up that excess that's around the, the seam itself. And what you're left with is a seam that's filled in so that it looks like a panel line and not like a crack in the model where you glued something together. Now, I only let this dry 15 minutes and you see it's, it's not hard to get up, but you have to, you have to give it a little bit of work. If you let it go longer, you can still get the stuff up for a time. I think the longest I've ever let it go, and this was accidentally, and was still able to get up the excess, was a, you know, maybe overnight. You know, did it one evening at seven o'clock, and then had to uh, try and get it back up the next morning. So you know, 12, 15 hours, whatever, and it was really difficult. I've not tested beyond that, so, uh, you know, it, it may still work a week later. I don't know. I don't, I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't tested it that way, and I wouldn't push it that far. What I would say is you want to come back to it within about an hour. Um, you're going to have the easiest time removing it within about 15 to 20 minutes, so plan accordingly, and also... While I only did this one section, normally what I do is I do the whole model with the Mr. Surfacer. Um, I don't just do one section at a time. I'll do the whole model. And by the time I finish, on most models, by the time I finish, unless there's just a very few places, I can go back to where I started and begin removing it. And by the time I work my way around the model, it's, it's all ready to, uh, to be removed. And so you see in this time that I've sat here and rambled on, got that taken care of. Note that there is a little gap right here and right here where those bubbles were. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back later and I'm going to do a spot application. I'm going to give it a little, little more time to dry. I'm going to give it a spot application there and there. I'm going to let those dry for about half an hour to an hour so they get good and solid in there. And then I'll come back and clean them up. 
Now, one thing you may be looking at is you see the, the leftover Mr. Surfacer that's there. I normally, if I'm going to prime my model, I normally leave that because it's really just discoloration. You can run your finger over it. You may feel the slightest texture, but a good primer is going to take care of that. If you've got a little more and you feel a little texture or you just want to clean it up because you're not sure, just damp your cotton bud once again and go clean up the excess and it'll be okay. Um, I normally just let it go. Now, if you're going to be painting over it directly and you're not going to be priming, you definitely want to do this because paint um, generally doesn't have as much body as primer. And so you may see some additional texture, but you can clean up that excess just like that and be good to go when you do your priming. Now, this model that I'm working on is actually uh, part of a Patreon exclusive video series I'm doing. Uh, on the Machining Krieger Jerry, and I just thought I'd use, because this is my, my current model that has some cracks, I thought, well, I'll use this as the demonstrator for uh, using Mr. Surfacer. But if you are interested in seeing this model being built in a very detailed fashion uh, across uh, several episodes of video, uh, check out my Patreon link, uh, which is below, and you can uh, start keeping up with this Jerry and all of the other Patreon exclusive builds that I have. Now just to give you a little bit of a look at what this is going to look like after priming, um, let me move Jerry out of the way here and show you this Warhammer Scorpius Disintegrator. Crazy name, but cool looking model. Right here along this panel line and right there and then along this join here and this join here and along some edges, I use this same uh, technique to apply Mr. Surfacer to fill in the crack and then when I primed over it you can't you can't tell the difference between where there was a seam with a little bit of a crack in it and a regular panel line. It all just kind of works together. So it's a very good technique to to uh, make those seam lines appear as panel lines and it works on I've used it on Gunpla, I've used it on Warhammer, I've used it on Machine and Krieger, I've used it on aircraft. Anything I've built, um, regardless of plastic, it works. The Mr. Surfacer um, is, even with Bandai plastic, is friendly enough to use on there that it works. And it, it fills in little gaps and allows you to convert to uh, fill in a seam line so that it looks more like a panel line. Now, you'll also want to, if you're doing this, say, on a Gunpla, and let's say the back of the leg armor comes together like that, and you want there to be a seam line down here, you will want to glue it first, not so that you can get rid of the seam line, but Mr. Surfacer is not a glue. And if you put this between two parts that aren't glued together, then potentially, if there's any kind of movement or flexing in the part, which can happen on an articulated model like a Gunpla, then it can break that seal and the Mr. Surfacer will not hold it. So you definitely want to make sure the parts that you're going to treat are glued together first so that they'll um, hold and then put the Mr. Surfacer on top of it and you should have uh, good results. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. Um, about using Mr. Surfacer 500. This is one of those products that I feel like I always have to have on my workbench. When this bottle gets about halfway down, um, I usually order another one or go to the hobby shop and pick one up because it's a must-have for me. I use it on every single build that I do. So it's a great product. And like I said, if you're interested in seeing this Jerry get built, uh, simply uh, follow the link below uh, to Patreon and you can sign up there. It's available to the enthusiast and the fanatic level supporters, the two top levels of uh, tiers of support uh, as exclusive builds. So if you want to see where that goes, check it out. This Scorpius Disintegrator, look for it on YouTube probably in the next three to four weeks. Um, I'm working on this one and filming it as I go. Uh, so be sure and look for that. And, uh, and that'll, that'll be free to everyone on YouTube. So look for that. 
And thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, thank you for supporting me on social media, for looking at the blog. Uh, I would be most grateful if you would click the button down there somewhere and subscribe and click the little bell icon. I would be most grateful. I'm trying to grow the channel. So subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, all of that is, uh, is a great help to me. And like I've spammed a couple of times already, if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, I would be most grateful for that. Just follow the links below. And finally, like I always want to say, in this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.